I think we are live. Let me just test this. If you're watching this post live stream, you know it's uh, you know it's live. And yes, I believe we are. Welcome. I shouldn't say welcome because no one's actually in the live stream yet. Welcome to myself, more like it. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few people to jump in here because there's no point in me talking to a YouTube audience when this is a live stream. <laughs> I've got to get myself out of that habit. DB, what's going on? Welcome. 619 Rich, what's going on, guys? It is a pleasure to be in your company yet again. <coughs> How's everyone's day been? I've changed the setup. Tyson, what is going on, man? Welcome, welcome. Is it Nada? Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, brother. Uh, I've just had a, I've just had a pretty uh, full-on day today. God, I feel so bad. I'm going to pronounce some of you guys' names. Is that Nick? I'm going to call you Nick. Sorry, man. <laughs> Reverend, what's going on? Is it JF? Good morning, good evening for me. Where is uh, where is all tuning in from? Because this is a this is up to that's great. You had a good day. This is uh, the hard thing about these is what I've decided on. If you guys are in my Discord, um, you'll know about this. If not, I suggest you join. Um, I've decided, thanks to a recommendation from from a viewer, that uh, I'm gonna chop these around from month to month. So I'm gonna have a set time for one month and then kind of cater these towards different times for different regions. Most of you are from the US. Most, and then I've got like a third of that in the UK, Europe area, and then like, you know, it tapers off from there. Arizona, it must be, um, it's quite early over there right now, isn't it? Early bird gets the worm, as they say. Yeah, look, today, today, um, I've got a, I've got a quite a fun but well covered topic on this channel, which is going to be risk profiles, talking about making sure that everyone's got this down pat. Um, now, one thing with the live streams is I was thinking like I don't really want to get too much into like talking about individual projects. I'm gonna, you know, go into them on the live stream for sure, but I'm talking about like the first X amount of minutes where I go into you know, teaching you something new on a daily basis. You know, I want to more so cover news, recent events, or, you know, more generic topics rather than just, you know, let's just talk about HBAR today because I do that on the channel a lot. I'll go release, we'll reach 100 billion market cap in 2025 and people are asleep right now. I'm not buying it at 16 cents. Yes, 100% agree. Enterprise focused blockchain is going to do extremely well as long as they focus on a good application layer. They had troubles with EV, not being EVM compatible for a bit there. One of the viewers, um, oh, I forget the guy's name now, but he's brought up multiple times that the relay nodes, which is essentially the backbone of the Algorand network, aren't being incentivized right now, which is a very worrying issue. But of course, they won't be able to keep that up for long. They'll obviously have to implement something there. That'd be my only concern. But again, um, Silvio is leading the project. I have full faith. Michigan, Germany, normally UK. Oh, interesting. Traveling, I like that. UK, UK. Okay, got a strong UK European audience in here as well. Brother, your top five coins going to the next bull run, not including Bitcoin or ETH. Good question, Tyson. Um, top five. This is something I haven't really, haven't really thought of. Definitely um, HBAR and Quant, uh, for sure. Uh, th those two projects are on the top of my list. They're the, my biggest holdings, actually. So I, I have to obviously disclose that. Um, good question. I'd have to do some more thinking of that. I'm really bullish on MENA protocol. Um, not many people are talking about it. Uh, so that's definitely one I think that needs to have a bit more light shine on it. Let's actually jump into I, I hope this doesn't cancel the stream. Give me one sec. Let's see. Can you guys see the uh, see my screen here? I'll answer that question in just a sec, Tyson. I'll get up Coin Market Cap to hopefully remind me. If not, you can ping me. Algo or Nia? Ooh. I'm gonna say Algorand, but Nia protocols decided coming to be like the the blockchain operating system. If they can pull their new focus. If they can get their new USP down pat, I would probably be pretty bullish on Nia. I just think Nia is going to have a massive run up 
from from their uh, sharding approach being implemented in 2024, 2025. And I think that's going to be pretty bullish for the project. So that's why I'm like going to say, you know, near should see pretty big price action because of that. Just check out your mic afterwards. Okay, I might bump up the grain a little bit here. This might be might be a bit better. I might move it closer to my mouth. Just let me know if if it's not as good. The thing about live streams, it's hard because I can't like edit this post production. Dubai, wow. I'm actually wanting to move to Dubai, like most crypto people tend to do. I hear him. I honestly think Sol will do well thanks to its mobile phone. Yeah, that is a very big thing. I think if they fail at that, it'll tarnish the brand like to the point of no return. But if it does well, it'll be extraordinary. Last time I checked was like over a year ago and that was like, uh, there was people crapping on that because it was like a Web3 phone you know, like had limited capabilities for an actual phone use case. I hope that they've changed it since then because it's pretty much you'll have to have like two phones then. Birmingham, welcome. You sack for PLS or... No, I didn't. Oh God, I misread that completely. Um, no, I didn't actually. I've never looked into Hex. I've never looked into Pulse Chain. Never looked into any of... I actually, believe it or not, I actually like Richard Hart. I find him a good character and I, uh, I actually like the guy. Um, but I have never looked into any of his projects. Go to the UK. Let's go. Um, Casper. I love Casper. Enterprise focused network. You could almost say it's like competing with the existing enterprise networks out there. Quarta, Quorum, um, Hyperledger Fabric. So it's like an impl it's like pretty much where Ethereum wants to be, except it's like better um, and upgradable smart contracts. It's essentially like an enterprise grade solution, but we're luckily enough to be able to buy in. They haven't just done like a whole, you know, their old thing off to the side. QNT top dog, yes. MNW. Now Morphe, I think it's Morpheus, right? Uh, haven't looked into them just as deeply yet, but they're definitely solving a very important issue. Uh, many projects will integrate with Mina. Yeah, I do believe so. Mina is good because it can be like added in very easily onto um, as into like a smart contract, for example. So you can have like almost a native instance of Mina running on a, a network rather than having a network interoperating with Mina via a bridge, if that makes sense. Better, I do like, oh good, the voice is better. I do like Render. Yeah, Render is a great project. So is Flux, Arweave, Gala V2 is already distributed yeah what is the date today oh my god it's the 15th yeah it's supposed to be today okay i better i better answer i better answer the question um god, i'm gonna forget who who asked the question now yeah I, I probably should let you guys know i had like five four hours sleep last night so uh the brain's like <laughs> tyson the brain's like ticking real slow at the moment apologize i do like me but it seems that micro down a little more yeah I want to get it at a lower price. Same. I got an ICO. Luckily, I got it at twenty five cents. So we're about two x up from that right now. So it's a good time to buy. Buy, you know, the basic metric that I've been telling everyone. Um, but I, I feel like it can go lower. I, I still again, I'm a, a strong proponent that there's going to be a black swan event that comes in, and we'll be able to accumulate some of these tokens at very discounted prices. But uh, that's that's my uh, that's my bet. You guys don't have to take the same bet, of course. Very bullish on um, Casper. The fact that it's not, it's not on major eleven exchanges. A very memeable project. Yeah, I agree. Meme is exactly what I'm looking for here. And you're right. Mina is like the meme king in my opinion. Bullish on Casper as well. Yeah. Look, I haven't looked as much into Casper. I've got the versus video coming out. The next versus video. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm keen to look into it. The founder, from what I've heard, is a, a, a very established and um, intelligent man. When's the right time to start dollar cost averaging into alts? I better get started with the with the uh, video, but <laughs> with the knowledge drop. Um, but a good time to buy is when Bitcoin's typically down on the seven day, right? Um, not the 24 hour, not the one hour. And I look for five to 10% ideal ranges. And what this does is like, well, look, Bitcoin is like controlling the market. It has been for forever, right? So you look at Bitcoin's chart, right? Uh, actually, I'm doing a video right now on uh, Polkadot. And I'm going to kind of show you the difference in the charts. It's crazy. Like Polkadot's chart from 2020 till now is the exact same as Bitcoin's from 2020 till now. And that's just like one instance. I'm sure every single project is the same. And we can see it with ETH. I mean, ETH just literally mirrors Bitcoin. I heard someone say the other day that uh, ETH, Bitcoin mirrors ETH. And I went, what? No, that doesn't make any sense. 
Um, okay, so guys, we'll get to some of your questions in a sec. Thanks for being here. It's not much I want to talk about today, right? I want to kind of get some more news. I've been actually quite unwell this last week. Um, I have, I've been in bed a couple of days there resting up for most of the day. So um, I haven't really prepared as much news as what I was like. But again, I had one of the gentlemen in my Discord say to me, look, you should probably talk about the risk more because most people don't do this. And I totally agree. Um, I've made a video, so I'm not going to go over all of this. But the typical... Influencer starter pack. What, what do all these influencers tell you? What do they say? They say 50% Bitcoin, have at least 10% exposure to Ethereum, and then look at mid caps. But that's like a one size, that's like a Cinderella story. Is that right? Cinderella was the one size, that was the shoe. I can't remember. Never, <laughs> nevertheless, it's important we diversify, right? Based on what you're willing to lose. If you're someone like me who, okay, you don't want to lose 100% of your cryptos right you're someone who kind of needs these to perform at least at least get my money back right <laughs> you don't want to put be the safest you know safest bet or the worst bet right so we come over here and we got to like look at how much you're actually willing to lose in crypto now this is actually a very important thing a lot of what i've found over the years being in crypto is some of this stuff is so basic so even like looking into projects like you would not believe like once you have a fundamental understanding of like the base knowledge of projects, learning new concepts from there, packing new information on is actually, it's all just like fundamental basic knowledge. Like it's crazy. Um, and this is coming from a guy who had, has no experience in systems or um, anything decentralized, right? But yeah, so the question is how much can you afford to lose? Now, if you're asking me how much am I willing to lose out of my portfolio? Let's just hypothetically sp spit a number out and say my portfolio is $10,000, right? Well, my actual risk appetite is 50%. That's that's me that's me personally. I, I would if I lost half of that in 3 years time, I'm going to be upset. Again, from last stream you guys know I'm looking at projects that are going to have a good long-term potential anyway, so that won't matter as much especially if I miss the tip of the bull market or whatever, whatever happens, right? I'm in hospital for whatever reason. But um, you want to make sure that you ask yourself, okay, is how much of this is actually, you know, needing to pay off and how much can I lose? Some of you, it's going to be 0%. Some of you are like, okay, I just, I want to make all this money, but I really am too nervous. I don't want to lose anything. I couldn't live with myself. And you'd be surprised that when you lose ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, you'd be surprised at how disappointed in yourself you are, especially if you miss... A little bit extra on the top right but yeah so if it is zero it's simple you just go back here or you come over here for example and you find like your low risk projects again right now it's 100 billion plus but essentially it's always going to be bitcoin and ethereum okay so you'd obviously go majority in that if not all in that and you're right and you can't expect high returns 10x 5x 2x whatever you get you got to take but now ultimately is a good time to buy it not financial advice you guys know the drill so yeah, whatever that is, you typically want to like spread your portfolio around. And I kind of use a couple different things to identify this, but essentially if you're putting any money into high risk, extremely high reward or medium risk, consider that gone. So for example, if you're like me and you're 50-50, well, it's simple. You'd split 50-50 between low risk, low reward, that's 50% and then 50% in these two bottom quadrants. It's as simple as that, right? But you do need to do this. And if it requires you restructuring your portfolio, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do because ultimately you're telling yourself what you're willing to expect and don't and don't kid yourself. You know, I've done this myself. If you go in there and you say, I want, I, I don't want anything to fall off. I want 0% chance of risk and nothing exists of the manner, but let's just hypothetically say, and you're like, oh, I don't want to go Bitcoin, Ethereum because I, I want some gains. You just go, screw it. I'm just going to buy some Mina, right? Medium risk. That's cool. But what happens if you lose all that money? You know, you're going to kick yourself in the ass. It's always good. Hindsight is obviously a crazy thing. So just imagine yourself in the shoes of going to the hindsight and being like, if only, if only, if only. I'm telling you, it pays off. It pays off. So I'm kind of like preaching to the choir. Hopefully you will understand this. If you've been watching the channel for any period of time in the last month or so, you would have seen the last couple of videos I've made touching on this sort of thing. Um, but but one thing I've um, been talking with one of my uh, one of my so-called students is narratives. All right, N narratives are so important, and I really haven't been focusing on them as much in the last bull market as I am into the coming bull market. 
Because you think about it like this. If you're looking into projects that are, let's just say, enterprise grade friendly, right? Caspar, uh, Hedera, whatever it might be, let's just say Quant, let's just pick some names here, right? And if they don't take off in 2025, yes, they're going to surge in price. Most of the market is still going to be comprised of retail, you know, curiosity, people like you and I speculating. But if you're wholly, solely and entirely focused on uh, those projects being adopted in real world use cases, then ultimately um, you're going to be pretty disappointed because the token's not going to absorb jack anything I'm, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna swear I don't know the uh, the T's and C's behind live streams but um, yeah it's just gonna be disappointing for you because you're not gonna expect the returns you want so you would obviously have to focus to a time where there's gonna be more market clarity than there is now and that's probably looking for 2029 plus okay um, so yeah like rich said memetics for example right it's a big part so narratives and memetics are actually two different things so you want to look into the narrative, okay, so DeFi, oracles, interoperability, layer one networks, um, DeFi, that's the narrative, okay, that's the narrative, and then you need to narrow it down from there and actually look at the projects you're interested in, right, find a list, create a list, just like we did down here, for example, and you once you create the narratives and they're in your risk portfolio, you can then begin to go in and say, is this actually memeable? What do I mean by memeable? Boil down the USP, right? We're a layer one interoperability solution. We have, we're WebAssembly state machine compatible. You can compile any code over to us. We have, we're the easiest uh, application network to set up a node on, whatever it might be, whatever garbage they spill. I call it the E, no, W-I-I-I-E, we, WebAssembly, instant finality. Uh, what's the second one? Uh... I'm forgetting the second one. Interoperability. God, I'm forgetting it now. Um, having a mind blank. Anyway, uh, infinitely scalable. That's it. My God. And I told you guys I was tired. And E for EVM compatible. We. Right, that's a fun acronym. Um, if they've got any of those stuff, chances are that's like the basic standard measure now. Every project pretty much has one of those or multiple of those, if not all of those. So we've got to kind of like boil that crap down and find like, what really is going to make that pop? What, what What is it going to really be? Okay. And so like you look at a project like Mina Protocol, they got multiple different aspects that's memeable. Okay. So if you're telling your friends and family about it, let's just say your friends and family were pretty well versed in crypto. They've heard it all before. They've been around since 2018. And you go to them, oh, we've got a new layer one network. It does this, it does that. It has almost instant finality, blah, 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 blah. They're going to go, cool. Who cares, right? They're going to go, okay, this is going to leave their mind. But then if you say something to them about that network that clicks that, clicks on their mind and goes, well, wow, right? That's the meme. You can almost do it to yourself. That is the meme. So that's what we're talking about there. Rich pointed it out. Thank you, Rich. Um, let's just catch up on some of these comments. Um, I'll come to the more newer comments. Remember HBAR token distribution at the end of the month too? Yes, thanks for pointing that out, 619. Zen, Rich, yeah, Rich loves Zen. Uh, we should probably look at Zen because I've, I've got some potential issues with that project. Just catching up on 2x speed notification did not work. Oh, really? Maybe I'm a shadow band, hey? The buzzword? I probably shouldn't say that because they might actually do that then. <laughs> did you see the Ben scam? Uh, is that uh, uh, BitBoy? Ben.e, BitBoy's coin. Oh, yeah, BitBoy's coin. He bought him out and that's up another. Interesting. Ben is what it's called. Is this it? Is this Ben? Yeah, I mean it's crap to bed. What's that? Well, the volume's down. This really just this really aggravates me with coin market cap is they don't tell you like any of the actual stats. I mean, yeah, it gives you like the hourly. I want the I want the date uh, weekly, you know. <clears throat> yeah so cleaned out six mil in a day yeah you can't trust these influencer coins actually you know what's really disturbing guys 
There is a no BS crypto coin. Um, actually, there was one. There was one trading. It must have um, must have been cancelled. Yeah, there was a trading. You know, BS. They must have gotten rid of it. I don't want to click that link. Yeah, this isn't me, by the way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust influencer links, by the way, guys. Just, uh, <laughs> I mean, influencer coins. Thoughts on trading bots? Good question, Pete. Um, I honestly don't uh, don't like them. I, I've heard too many horror stories of people using them and it's not paying off. You know, like you end up losing. Like, you want to look at this on a macro lens. Like, what two months, three months? How long do you give the bots to start making profits? And at that time. You know, you could have used that money to play around yourself and... Because um, paper trading is crap. Don't, I mean, uh, okay. I've got to be careful what I say. But from what I've done with trading, the very little time I've traded, it's not the same as real money. If you paper trade, like... There's not that fear. There's not that that lesson learned. You go, oh, okay, I mucked up there. How can I learn from this? There's not that, oh my God, I can't do this again. What do I have to really extract from this? So yeah, I think trading bots have like a good outcome... Maybe long term, but who wants to run a training bot for years? Yeah. Um. Um. I, one of my doctors actually had a doctor appointment like years ago now, and he started talking about trading bot. I told him I did crypto, and he's like, "Oh, I've got a crypto trading bot." I was like, "How's it performing?" Um. It was KuCoin trading bot, right? He's like, "Oh, yeah, it's maybe like a hundred bucks over like three months." I'm like, Phew. "So like, like why not just spend a bit of time and and do some digging yourself?" I was speaking with a guy from um Twitter. He does like. His name's Rob Lennon. He does like AI stuff. And he actually told me he created his own trading bot. He's a developer. And I was thinking that might be a good idea. If you can develop, if you know code and you can create your own, that might be profitable. But I don't know about existing, you know, click and click and implement. Makes a bad name for us. Yeah. Huge on Twitter the last few days. It really is, isn't it? Like this industry is supposed to be going to, to new heights. And yet we have people creating these meme coins off tweets and you know, just to make some money from their influences, I mean, from their community. It's it's a bit of a shame, a bit of a shame. Guys, drop some more comments. Any any questions for me? I'm going to answer some more here. That was my lesson, by the way. It was a quick lesson, wasn't it? It was a quick lesson. Um, again, I want to be more prepared in the future. I've just been feeling really unwell this last week, trying to rest as much as I can so I don't burn out. Uh, tell me Gala V2 price prediction. Look, you know, Gala V2 price prediction, that's going to be hard for me to say because it all it all depends on how seamless the transition is. And, and ultimately, I think there might... I mean, let's have a quick look. There might be some demand coming for... I think it might be a bad time to do this because 4%. Again, like I want... I want the seven-day stuff. The 24-hour for me doesn't mean too much. I mean, I'm, I'm over that. I, I want more steady, steady idea of the project. And I still haven't answered Tyson's question on my top five projects, have I? Gala. Yeah, I mean, because look, the market's down, so it really hasn't... Um, I mean, it's kicked off from where it was, but... But I guess the... But I guess... <laughs> This is all American, isn't it? So I think I'm a day ahead. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. Maybe this is a, the precursor to what's to come. But ultimately, yeah, probably the safest thing would have been to like sell your Gala tokens if you were in profit or at same value and buy back in once the migration has happened. But at the same time, there is a chance that you do have a bit of slippage, i.e. you buy in at a bit too much from what you sold. Let's have a look here, fellas and ladies. What is good at the moment? Oh, I've missed some comments. Yeah, look, 619, I, I do agree, man. Like, we are really nowhere near a bull market. People are going to sit here and say like, well, you know, history doesn't repeat at rhymes. But I say, look, everything is still tethered to Bitcoin's price. So, you know, if Bitcoin shoots up 100% in a day, the alts might not follow initially, but they will, right? If Bitcoin falls as it has, the market falls. So for people to say, well, 
you know, we're well, just 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 very just under twelve months off the next halving. It started. No, it hasn't. I don't think it has. Um, and remember, we're all we're all quite experienced when it comes to crypto. Most people haven't seen a bull market or two. So I feel like a lot of people are going to be uh, misinformed about a lot of this sort of stuff. You know, I think most of you guys can agree. Like when you start something new, especially crypto, it's easy to get like a general grasp of it and think you're a genius. And then when you like, the more you learn, the less you know. So <laughs> it's like a rabbit hole. Yeah, so let me answer the question, Tony. What is good right now? Again, what I encourage everyone to do is whether it's CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko or both, create a watch list. Create a watch list, just go through, add a whole bunch of projects you're interested in, right? That you've heard good stuff about, you want to look more into, just like I have here, right? All these projects. And then when Bitcoin is down 5% to 10% or more on the seven day, on the weekly, come in here and just see which projects are down the most, right? And if you've got 100 bucks, 200 bucks, five bucks to DCA for that week or that day, it's simple. You, know, you just come over here and just find a project that's down the most, and don't be fooled, sometimes projects that are down the most on the seven day aren't always the best time to buy. And what I'll do is, I mean, my list is a lot shorter than this, of course. These are more so my watch list projects. But you'll come in and you'll obviously find which uh, projects um, are down the most on that particular DCA week or month. And then you'll buy that project. You know, sometimes I hold off because it's no price is optimal. Sometimes I'll, I'll take a bit more of a leap and I'll buy in a bit extra if there is a, a general good time to buy. So yeah, any project that's down um, that you're looking at already or you've already invested in that you want to bring down your dollar cost average. It's never a bad thing to bring that DCA down. Do you know how much uh, about HTR? Not really, actually. Not really, Matthew. Well, what, what the hell? This project was heaps higher than this at the last bull market. I remember this project being like quite high. Yeah, 500 mil market cap. Wow, it's gone down. Jesus, it's gone down heaps. Is it Hathor? A scalable and easy to use blockchain for digital assets. Again, like we're talking about memes, right? That's tell me nothing. That tells me nothing. It's like every other project. What's going to make me want to buy it? Uh, really, it should be the first line. Yeah. Why are we different? The latest features combined with a scalable decentralized architecture. High scalability. A technology is a natural evolution of Bitcoin's blockchain, achieving 200 plus TPS with no central coordinator or master nodes. Easy to use. A scalable blockchain where anyone can create their own token in less than a minute. I need to know about gas, solidity, or X. ERC20. Okay. Is that a good thing though? I don't know. And this is the thing about networks like saying that you can anyone can create a smart contract. Is that a good thing? Is that really a good thing? I feel like you should have some skin in the game. There's a bit, you know, more than just liquidity. I feel like you should have to put time and effort into it to create an application worthy of people's investment. Otherwise, you're just going to have like what's happening with BNB right now, where it's just like the meme coin central. It's like the, it's just like, like, I don't even know. I guess it's a tactic, right? Use BNB if you want to like make some quick bucks on very risky projects, but. I don't know a single person that uses Binance Chain for like this is the good projects. Let's have a let's have a sus. No fees. Built-in atomic swaps. Nano contracts. What the hell is nano contracts? An easier, an easier and safer implementation of smart contracts, which connects real-world data. Okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why it's dropped down so much in price. I mean, from what it sounds like, they just need to be more memeable. Like from reading this, I mean. Again, if you're someone who wants to invest in crypto, you're not like reading this going, oh my God, the 10 other projects I've just looked at, this is it. You have to go one step further and look more into it. Like I wish projects just had like a landing page that just like really told you why they're different. And if they can't, if they're not different, just shut up shop. You're going to, you know, you're going to drain your money. Gala games suck. I mean, I've heard a few people say that. Hoddle Gala. Will Jasmine rebound? Ooh. I yeah, again, I don't I don't have my paws into Jasmine like some other people do. XRP court case finish time. Um again, I haven't caught I, I for me, I'm 
not really involved too much with XRP, to be honest with you. And I should because it's a big community. A lot of people talk about it. Um, but I don't know when the court case is expected to finish. I don't think anyone does, but I feel like it is coming towards the finish line. Zoop OnlyFans founder, Tim Stokely, launching soon. How do you get an airdrop? How do you get an airdrop? Well, typically you have to like look into the to the requirements. Sometimes they have free airdrops. Sometimes you have to use the DEX once, or I say DEX, whatever the platform typically is. Uh, Tony, no worries, man. Of course, I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you guys. Findora FRA is a new privacy project that devs from Harmony One left to join. Okay, that's interesting because um, I respect what Harmony did. Harmony kind of spearheaded the sharding approaches, um, at least in terms of dynamic resharding, I believe. So that's good. That's good to see that the devs are um, heading over to Find Findora. You guys mentioned some great projects to me last week, by the way. Let me tell you that. You really did suggest some great projects. I need to look into them more before I speak about them again. But suffice to say, they were quite interesting, right? I feel like this might be one of them. I definitely haven't gotten around to look into it yet. Fundora is a layer one blockchain building a future for Web3 where you can expect privacy that's auditable and program. See, that is it. That is what Hathor needed to have on their um, landing page. Because that tells us what it is. It's a layer one blockchain building a future for Web3. Okay, so we know what it is focused on right now. That's the broad sense. You expect privacy that's auditable and programmable. That's the point of difference. That's what I like to see, all right? Beautiful. I can pretty much like close this down right now and like pretty much just blatantly tell someone roughly what Fendora is, okay? So yeah, uh, Fendora's mission is to ensure you have an, the option of privacy in Web3 because you should hashtag expect privacy from the applications you use. I agree. Uh, ownership holding, okay. 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 And from, okay, so from there, it's pretty much just going to be pretty broad stuff, but okay. By combining privacy and auditability, Fenora prepares for Web3 for mass adoption, empowering developers to protect. Okay, yeah. So like, okay, it's better than um, Hathor, in my opinion. Uh, a, better, a better explanation of the, of the proje uh, project. I put project and product together. Yeah. I mean, it's worth looking into. And what's the market cap? Yeah, it's a micro cap. So, I mean, you know, th these projects are sometimes good to bet on. Because, I mean, as long as that narrative hits and it's quite, it's like fairly memeable, I would probably add a 10, like just based on what I've read, it's probably like a six. Keep in mind, a five is true to its name. Five is average. Five's like, yeah, okay, that's okay. So six is above average. The reason I say it's a six is because I'm worried about the, the narrative itself. Um, not being as memeable as other narratives but in saying that it's pretty good you know worthy of a look how are you i'm very well actually i, I lie that's such a, that's such like a typical response to that question isn't it i'm still getting over my flu i got a headache you know all the all the bells and whistles that come along with being unwell but i'm getting there hopefully you're well too you think bitcoin bottomed uh, see i'm a firm believer in the I'm a fan believer we're going to find some more downside soon. Just with the, all the events that are happening, all the cycles finishing, you know, whether it happens in the next year or two or 2026, my opinion is I am going to be getting in at prices way cheaper than even the prices right now. So like for me, I don't, I don't care if I miss the bull market. I'm not trying to be the best trader in the world. I'm not trying to catch the prices now, risk it all, like literally wake up every morning in a, in a pile of sweat because I'm trying to catch the top of the market before uh, when's this like doom and gloom event going to happen because it will happen it's a matter of time it will happen so my question my, my answer to that is like you know I don't really know when Bitcoin's going to bottom but it's definitely going to hit a way bigger bottom than when it has at least at $15,000 like it did at the start of the year um, and again I don't care if I miss out on some gains because I'm securing myself you know I want to be able to be 27 I'm 24 right now 
27, 28, at least 30 and retire. Not have to think about anything ever again. Like that is the goal. So for me, I'm happy to miss out on some of these extra gains here. I mean, yeah, you're going to have people that are going to time the top perfectly. Invest now. Let's just say that, you know, it happens ideally in 2026. They've made millions from nothing. They reinvest at the bottom. There's going to be people like that and they're going to be probably billionaires. Simple as that, but uh, I'm not risking that, guys. I, I don't gamble. Never have, never will. I think I have gambled once. I put two bucks on the pokies. <laughs> didn't... I didn't win anything. I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. What do I think about ICP? I love ICP. Uh, I plan to make a video on that, but I decided to get rid of the full deep dive breakdowns at least for now, until I could hire some people to free up some more time in making these videos. I love ICP. I think there's huge potential with ICP, and I think people are going to be blown away at the potential with that project. Probably one of the biggest in the space. Have you had a gander at the cybersecurity genre? Lost list and happy are two. I'm keeping. I, yeah, I reviewed happy some some time ago. Um, yeah, cybersecurity is going to be important. It's going to be important. I, I wouldn't know if it's going to be a massive narrative, but it'll 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 be important. Have you looked into kilt? No, I get lots of comments on kilt actually. Yeah, look, I really like. I want to review all the. I have a massive list of projects. It's like five page. If I was to write it out, it's like five pages long of projects I need to look at. It's pretty overwhelming, but um, I trust you guys. Bring me the best stuff. Okay, so the volume. I mean, that's horrible. Right? Fifty-two thousand dollar volume, eighteen mil. Mark. I mean, that ratio is abysmal. I mean, let's just talk about. Um, what's that? Let's just say eighteen thousand five, eighteen million five hundred. Divided by, what was that? 52,000. What's the ratio on that? 355 to 1. No, thank you. Circulating supply, 17%. That's not good, but I'm not going to rate them on coin market cap stuff and trust them as far as I can throw them. Yeah, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a did. Decentralized identi identity. Yeah. Uh, they're on Polkadot, no? From memory. Look, the thing is, I don't know how important DIDs are going to be, DID-specific blockchains or networks, because these, this is going to be inbuilt into like all the networks sooner or later. So I don't know how important it's going to be. I think these projects like Kilt that are DIDs, again, decentralized identity-based um, cryptocurrencies, they solely rely on their partners, right? Because you think about it, you, you're a, a software that focuses on focuses on vetting clients right vetting potential customers so you have to locate and have lots of partnerships and integrations with projects that rely on this sort of stuff okay and if you don't you're going to succumb to you know being out competed by just other networks more developed than you have more capital to spend on developers to bring this into their network um you know intrinsically so you're going to be out competed so if i was you um if I was you, uh, who answered who that? One, I would definitely just look at the partners, man, with this one. Lossless looks very promising. Yeah, let's take a little lossless. Okay, it's still, yeah, I mean, that's, again, not the not the best, but, you know, we, we are in uncertain times. Now, this is an important thing to look at, right? Audits, okay? So, you know, audits are quite important. That gives you a clear indication of, okay, the the... Code has been checked by X amount of potentially, you know, very important auditors, which is a bit relieving. But I want to say there's been lots of projects out there that have been audited that still are scams. You know, they either pay them off. You know, Certic and Hacken are very reliable and trustworthy, but they still miss things. There's still people. The good thing is you can actually go on to their audit. They'll typically have it on their website or the project will, will have it listed on their website. And it'll tell you like the score and the rating. Obviously, if it's a bad score they might not be as inclined to, right? At least on the project. When will bull, bull run start? I'd probably say, you know, in or around April next year. Uh, that's when the next Bitcoin halving is and I suspect uh, prices will begin to soar up from there. Uh, until you end up using them, you know they want privacy enablements on protocols. Yeah, they, they definitely do want, like, there definitely is a need for it, but I wouldn't necessarily say, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's 
solely reliant on just a need because they can just implement implement the DIDs themselves. Privacy coins can't get wiped out. Lol, government can ban it like they did BTC. What did that do? Um, question for Kyron. Don't you think quant can get overridden by a new protocol? Discuss. No, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. There's not really a, a direct competitor to quant in terms of, well, there is, there's definitely competitors, but there's nothing doing like what quant's doing, right? Everything has an API. Everything runs with APIs. It's just as simple as that. And quant can just seamlessly connect to any network extremely seamlessly. Legacy, new, enterprise, private, again, public, cryptocurrencies, any service that is online that runs off an API, your website, like if you run that off a, off a private server like let's just say it's in your home for example that has an api can connect with quant so i feel like quant has is taken advantage of a very important and, and fundamental technology right i don't think it can be out competed i don't think it can be out competed um, um so quant has their a very strong foot in the uk all right gilbert's a very smart guy when you're talking about following leaders leaders ultimately are what bring the project to life don't worry about the accolades as much as, well, of course, <laughs> you need to worry about the accolades because it goes into like assessing the quality of the person. But like if they're a developer and they do this and they do that, who cares? Like boil it down. Are they going to be a good leader? Can they bring it to life? You can always hire people to be a better developer than you. You know, are you a good leader? So yeah, I think um, a quant has a very, very good chance at just taking up everything, right? We'll see how the CBDC implementation goes. I had a question on my recent quant video that said like, look, aren't you a bit worried about quant? Like it's literally planning to be a part of this controlling world. And I do agree. But the conclusion I came to, I've, I've gone back and forth with myself on this a lot. And it's like, we can, we can just not invest in quant. We can bar it. But... If we, like, not everyone's going to have the same mentality. It's still going to take off. If it still finds demand, if it's still used, it's going to make people a lot of money. And it's like, if you are someone who hedges into it and it comes, all these promises come to life, well, ultimately, what's going to happen? You're going to have enough money to hopefully escape the system that it's creating. If not, you're going to have a bit more money. It's still going to happen. If it doesn't happen, well, it doesn't happen. Great. There is an ethical conundrum there. There definitely is. Uh, that's That's my final thought i had some guy you know message me recently like going off at me i can't believe you promote these projects da, da, da. i went man like i mean ultimately it's helping people it's still gonna it doesn't matter if no one buys a token because if the, <laughs> the use cases take off it doesn't matter about retail curiosity does it interlay yes rich so rich introduced me recently again to interlay interlay is a fantastic project i probably should look at loss uh lossless shouldn't i but remind me, we'll look at Interlay next. Interlay? Very small project on Polkadot that looking to, that's looking to leverage Bitcoin for DeFi-related things, as far as I can remember. Important. Yeah. TSTY5. Um... Look, ICP might be backed by all those names. That to me is just a green light, man. That to me is a green light. I mean, look. I mean, look at the world we're living in, bro. Like, you know, you have Google, Apple, all these conglomerate enterprise, multinational companies. Whatever buzzword you want to use, it's all interconnected, man. BlackRock, Vanguard, all... I don't want to put my tinfoil hat on, guys, but if you know, you know. All of this stuff is going to crap. You know, look at the WEF. By 2030, you know, you'll have nothing and be happy. It's happening, whether you like it or not. So for me, it's like, if those companies are backing the cryptocurrency, I want to get into it now. Like, what, you know, okay, you might crap on Microsoft and say it's a part of the new world order or whatever, but wouldn't you want to get in Microsoft in the 1990s? If you had the chance right now, wouldn't you want to do that? Set yourself free. Set your family free. You escape the system. That's what we're doing here, guys. If any of you know Dan Pena, <laughs> if any of you guys know Dan Pena, that is what is going on in my head right now in regards to all this sort of stuff. We need to take advantage. I'm not going to repeat the stuff he says. Look him up. <laughs> I'll get banned for sure. If privacy isn't at the base layer, it's not private. That's true. That's true. 100%. 
Do we avoid coins that are hyper shield by traders? Yeah, I don't. KM, I don't look at any of that crap, man. Can't trust them as far as you can throw them, man. No, I, I don't trust anyone that's telling you to buy a project. I, I'll never trust their calls. I, I'd rather be wrong on my own accord than trust them and then hate them for it. I'm not like a an ethical, like, you know, messiah, but I'm just like, I, I feel like if I'm the type of person, I would rather put that pressure on myself to fail. That way, I've only got one person I can blame in... 60 years time on my, you know, let's just say, let's say 100 years time on my deathbed, right? <laughs> be optimistic here, Jesus. I blame myself. I, I'm not going to ever be like, oh, I wish I didn't listen to that person. Okay. So definitely, yeah. It's a good question though. Don't delete this live. Going to watch it later. For sure, bro. I'm never going to delete any lives. Never. Unless I like crap myself or something. I'll definitely be deleting that. Can HBite hit $5 next one? I think it can, Sydney, Sydney. But... It's going to solely rely on many different factors. That's like my top, top price prediction. One thing we don't know about the next bull run is how much how much institutional slash national demand. I need to come up with a buzzword for that. Like we, right? That we don't know because it's only ever been retail speculation at this point. And more people are getting into crypto. So yes, like by historic measures, we will see more money in crypto. I believe... Hedera will see, will shock people, will blow people's minds. I just don't know by how much. It all depends on what happens between now and then, especially if there's a framework implemented for crypto. It'll give some businesses that peace of mind and clarity like, okay, we can go and build in, on crypto. Who are we going to go build on first? Well, we're going to build on the easiest place to build on that has the most traction, that is the most connected, that has the best stats. Who is that? <laughs> Say no more. HBAR. Casper, some of these really important projects. You look at uh, Stella, XRP. You know, but that's enterprise adoption. That might not come to a 2027 plus. We don't know, right? We don't know. Um, okay, let's move on here. Guys, good questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm appreciating these questions here today. Um, I apologize again. I can't get to all of them. I really, really want to. Um, yeah, always reminding myself, follow the big money. 100%. What do you think of Kusama? I think Kusama's great. I think it has its own sort of use case uh, off off to Polkadot, right? It's not just like Polkadot's little sister that just is trialed and tested and stabbed first before we check the big girl. Um, I, I think it definitely has its own use cases. Lots of interesting projects. I feel like it's going to be like the metaverse slash gaming slash, um, yeah, well, gaming pretty much um, side of Polkadot, right? Polkadot's more like the official corporate person, if you will. So yeah, I think it's going to go up quite a bit in price. Good tokenomics for lots of explosive price action. Okay, we've got a question about Flare. Now, I'm going to quickly go through these questions. I'm going to actually get into looking at these projects. You guys need to get on to me. Crack on to me, you know? If I'm, if I'm huffing and puffing. I just like talking to you, that's all. Um... Look at the market cap. Uh, okay, MMAI is a great project to check. Yeah, I'll check that out in just a sec. Let's get that up. Ready, MMAI. Oh, is this a meme coin? Is this an AI meme coin? Okay, maybe not. We'll look at it. Thank you for going live. No worries, man. Of course, of course. Live every Monday unless something pops up. Any plans to interview Dan at Flux? Yeah, so that was... Um, that was um, there is a plan in the, in the, in the, in the pipe works. Um, something had come up last a uh, couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago now. Uh, so I, there was an interview planned, but um, it had to be canceled, unfortunately. So um, we are looking to reschedule that. I, I'm just not too sure about live streams anymore, guys. Um, live streams, not <laughs> interviews. I, I had three cancellations on me in three consecutive weeks. Um, never happened before. I've never had someone cancel on me before. And then I, I wanted to do a uh, interview a week, once a week, every week for like, you know, forever. And I had three cancel on me um, for all good reasons. And I was like, maybe this is a sign. So I don't know whether I should reschedule the Dan interview, to be honest with you. Um, but he's a great guy, I've heard. Uh, Flux is one of my favorite projects. Quinn Bureau did a great vlog on the future of alts today. Yeah, he's one of the big guys that I actually trust. Yeah. Could you show an example of where coins are hyper shield? That is a great question, KM. Um, I don't know off 
any off the top of my head. Guys, maybe if you can um, help KM answer that question, give me some, make sure you tell me it's a shield project. Give me some projects that are hyper shield and I'll look at in, into them. I just don't know if any off the top of my head. Sorry, man. Kusama is a sandbox for Dot. It will. It did well last round, probably again. Dot didn't get in golf. Uh, love last time. Yeah, enough love last time, rather. I'm bullish on Fowler Network. Yep. More money. All right, guys. Let's just briefly look at these projects, then we'll move into some more questions. So, lossless. Restoring trust in Web3 security. Lossless incorporates a new layer of blockchain transaction security, protecting selected projects and their communities from malicious exploits and the uh, associated financial loss. Okay. Supported chains. Okay. Lossless uh, total. Of, uh, whoa. Oh, it's 40 million. I read that like 40 billion for a second there. Leaders in Web3 security architecture and exploits mitigation tools. Losses protocol implements an additional layer of blockchain transaction security for ERC uh, standard tokens, uh, mitigating the financial impact of smart contract exploits and private key theft. Losses protocol utilizes community-driven threat detection identification tools, rather, and a unique stake-based reporting system to identify suspicious transactions, providing real-time protection. Okay, that's important. Real-time protection is where it is heading. It doesn't, it doesn't get me going. It just doesn't get me going. I'm not going to lie. One dap, all things Bitcoin. This is interlay, right? Again, Rich, appreciate you sh shouting this out again, man. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much unlocking BTC on Polkadot for DeFi. Pretty important. I, I think that's pretty important. And the fact is, the, it's like the market cap's like a million dollars right now. It's crazy low. It's probably a pretty good hedge if you have some um, disposable income. Your one-stop shop for Bitcoin DeFi. Yeah, I've pretty much summarized it. It's said and done. Now, see, this doesn't necessarily have like this amazing well, like meme, but the use case is pretty important. Okay, so this one, in this case, looking at interlay, I would probably say if you're someone who's like researching this as a potential investment, you need to look into how it actually leverages it. Is it a mint and burn? Like how, how does it get Bitcoin to um, Polkadot? And is it trustworthy? Because there's got to be a somewhere where it locks up the BTC and unlocks the BTC over here. There's got to be some sort of feature, okay? That's this what I'm sort of thinking with these projects. DeFi is very like, you know, is it actually legit? Thank you for the stream, Karan. No problem, my friend, no problem. Is it safe to buy Algo SEC call them out as a security? Um, yes. Okay, so I, I could get myself in a lot of trouble saying something before anything like you guys know how it is with this sort of stuff. Um, in my opinion, like what I'm mentally thinking is they call them out in a lawsuit with a centralized exchange. Apparently, I haven't seen this black and white with my own eyes. Apparently, because it was the way that the Bitrex, the centralized exchange, was promoting and offering like staking and stuff like that, essentially operating those projects. So um, those are the projects that they came out with and said, you're not doing this up to standards. And then um, there was other stuff involved in that lawsuit. So yeah, they just name dropped Algorand. It's honestly for me, man, I've bought a fair bit of Algorand because of this drop. I'm loving it. Said Ronald McDonald. Hello, games for a living, Pan. Um, the event was on Saturday. The team came out of Korea. Uh, we to be, uh, sorry, but I don't know if that's responding to someone else. Colin, how did you become so smart in crypto? One of the most underrated guys out there. My friend, thank you. That actually means a lot to me. Um, a lot of, a lot of hours have gone into everything I know. I'm still learning. Of course, I always try to learn every day. The, um, I don't have any background in any of decentralized networks, uh, anything to writing software. Even hardware. I, you, I, I've tried to build a computer before. I got a custom built PC, but uh, I got a friend to make it for me. By all, you know, I don't know any of that sort of stuff. But I have a keen passion. I got in love with crypto because it was like a way to make money. And then I started looking into this stuff, and I'm like, wow. Like for me to actually, as Warren Buffett said, you never want to invest in anything you don't understand. And that kind of was like, if I'm going to take this stuff seriously, I've got to like pull my finger out. So like, 
I would just get up in the morning, man, make myself a cup of coffee. I'd be tired, of course, but I'd have that first cup, boom, excited, happy, love, and life. And for like the first two, three hours before work. At first, it started an hour and it slowly grew and grew and grew. And then I just started looking into white papers. All right, everyone's talking about Stella. What is Stella? Go on the website. Okay, I don't really know what this means. I'll open the white paper. And it was a point, guys. It was literally a point where I was like researching every second word. And it was frustrating as hell. But, you know, it definitely pays off. You know, hard work always pays off. And you don't realize how much you know until you start talking to people too. That's one thing I'll say. Uh, Jim, 10K quant, LOL. I mean, I don't discredit that, man. I wouldn't discredit the 10K quant prediction because even though I think it's definitely like the, an extension of where it can go, I mean, they got some of the biggest partnerships out and, and it's all NDA stuff, like truly NDA stuff. Speak on Flair, bro, please. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, after I do Meta Monkey. I don't know. <laughs> See how this goes. Meta Monkey. I don't know. That doesn't sound very uh, <laughs> very appealing to me. Flair. Meta Monkey. Uh, do I want to open this? I appreciate you sending me this, by the way. Uh, let's have a look. Unlock the secrets of MMAI Pure World with the NF with the key to the city, right? Holders of the key to the city enjoy unparalleled access and special privilege. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like, tell me what your project does. Like, who writes the copy for these companies? I don't know. Metaverse. Okay, so let me say for this, I'm going to exit this page, not because I think it's a bad project, but because I won't be able to provide you much knowledge on our metaverse-based projects. It's out of my wheelhouse. Same with gaming. You know, I know a little bit, but not enough to be like, this game is better than this game. I can talk to you about how it operates, but not not the game itself. But I appreciate whoever sent me that. I, f I forget now. I met a monkey. Might be something that you guys look into. One more market cap. Could be a good um, hedge to the next bull market. Flare. Okay, here we go. What are you, Flare? Let's see if the let's see if Flare's copy is good, guys. Flare is the blockchain for data, providing developers with secure, decentralized access, access, access to highly the hell? Integrity? Am I, I mean, I definitely, you know, again, I'm quite tired right now. Am I reading that wrong? High integrity? I never heard that word before. Data from other chains and the internet. Okay. Am I just special? Or like, why have I not gotten that word down, Pat? Okay, I just, integrity. <laughs> uh, please tell me someone. Someone's laughing at me. <laughs> I'm so tired right now. I'm blaming the sickness, guys. And the, and the tiredness. Um, okay, maybe I shouldn't be looking at projects. EVM-based layer one blockchain with two native data acquisition, uh, acquisition protocols. Okay. Hey, look, if you don't laugh, you got you cry. Hey, you got to laugh. Flare time series oracle decentralized prices. Let me reread this again because it threw me off. Flare is a blockchain for data providing developers with security central access to high integrity data from other chains on the internet. Okay, it sounds interesting. It doesn't like get me going though. No. Like, okay, so if you want the key to my heart, guys, I, I like the projects that are like, that have, I can see like an actual application in the real world right now. Not to say Flare is bad. Um, maybe this will have a bit, bit of explanation for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It sounds interesting. Yeah, I mean, this will be something I'll look into. I'm actually going to save this. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can save it like that. Thank you. Saved for later. I will take a look. Appreciate that. Sui, yeah, good question. Yeah, Sui's a good question, man. Um, I'm actually looking at making a video on this. I was supposed to make it last week, got a bit unwell. I was just, I posted a few videos that I had already made. Um, 
Because I think it just launched pretty crappily, right? It had a really... Oh, they got rid of it. That's good to see. They cancelled out that launch. Yeah, because the price was very skewed, right? It was like four, five, six dollars, whatever it was. So, so this trading action here looked like a flat line. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It had a horrible launch. 5% circulating supply. Again, we can't look at this and go, that's the be all and end all. Because there's always a reason why. Unless the reason is a crap reason. In that case, it's bad. I just use um, Veracity as a prime example of this, right? Because everyone looks at Veracity and goes, 9% in circulation, that's bad. But... 90 billion tokens aren't actually the supply. Coin market cap and Coin Gecko refuse to update this based on actually how many tradable VRA tokens there are. Because there is 110 billion, but 90 billion are stuck on the VRA chain. That's like, that's just means nothing. It's just a way to prove that you're um, interacting with the network. So I don't trust Coin market cap and Coin Gecko with that crap. Yeah, let's actually, let me answer this question, okay? Let me answer this question. So let's have a look at Sui again. <coughs> Innov innovative decentralized label on blockchain that redefines asset ownership. Come on, tell me more, guys. Tell me more. You know what's funny, though? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some alpha for you guys. Um... This website, Developer Report. This is my secret source to giving you guys the data on all the um, on all the developers, right? So you can type in here like most projects that were active December last year. Now this is historic. This is only till December, but if you go to developerreport.com, you can type in project. Right, Sui is one of them. So Sui has been working, and they actually have a fair amount of full time devs, right? They do. And again, this was from last year, so they weren't out yet. So this website's fantastic. Um, it's a good bit of alpha. You can actually go on here and have a look. Uh, developer report, right? Come down here. This is their executive summary. Again, this is all free. This report right here is 185 pages of pure gold. And you can click through here. I tend to use two fingers to skip through it quite quickly. And you can go to where they start looking at individual. I mean, I definitely read this. This gives you a great indication of um, what's happening on what projects here. So... This is where they compare some of the projects from December to December 21 to 2022 to see how the growth of the ecosystem has been overall, right? But then you come in here and it's like you can start looking at, I don't know how well you guys can see this. Okay, pretty well. Um, you can see the developers in comparison, right? So Ethereum number one, Polkadot two, um, Cosmos three, um, Bitcoin four, full-time developers 2022. Okay, we're looking up here, right? So um, yeah, Cosmos, Solana, then Bitcoin. And then it moves on, right? Focuses on this range here. And then you have like a whole heap more, right? You've got Polygon, Kusama, BNB, Nia, da 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 right? Goes on, okay? you got some more, right? But yeah, use this if you like, guys. Developerreport.com. You're going to get these drips of important information when you watch these live streams, I tell you. Ten quant or... Oof. Is that 20,000 HBAR? 20,000 HBAR. Let's actually value this, right? I, I'm, I'm already leaning to one. I'm not going to tell you what just yet, all right? 10 coins, a thousand bucks, yeah. Or, it's funny because I'm going to make a video on this soon. Uh, 20,000 HBAR. Hmm, same price. As you would suspect, right? Crap, that's a good... Because this is my number one and number two hold. <laughs> okay. Um... I am going to say, if I had to pick, it's essentially, well, the answer is, what would I rather pick, right? Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's one of the hardest questions I've ever had, actually. I'm just going to pick HBAR. I'm going to pick HBAR. Just because I feel like one issue I have with Quant is this, like, they could easily just, like, cancel their smart contract as a settlement layer and just go ahead and create their own token or do whatever they'd like. Okay, there is that uncertainty there, whereas HBAR is leading to more of a democratized, you know, decentralized network. Um, technically, you could argue it's still the governing council. When all the governing council members are in there, what is it, like 39? Still somewhat not decentralized. You must remember, this is for governance proposals. This is for the direction and upgradability of the network. Would you rather have a group of developers that don't know 
diddly squat about, you know, um, economics, just know how to code and always want upgrading in the code and you don't know really what's happening behind the scenes, like Bitcoin, right? You don't really know. Look where Bitcoin is. They've changed the protocol so much because of these devs, because of this governance. Anyway, HBAR, I feel like, is a very good governance structure. Plus, they also have a board of directors. And then, the, then, then there's the network. And the network will be permissionless, meaning fully open to the public. So, yeah, I, in my opinion, I'd pick Hedera over Quant because of that reason. Because it does fit into this narrative more, I would feel more comfortable sleeping at night ever so slightly with HBAR. Hopefully, that answers your question, Sydney. Sydney? How have you checked Nexa? POW, uh, I'm looking into POW, such as Casper projects to hedge against possible POS regulations. Here's the thing. One, be very careful with proof of work. I'm a proof of stake bull, so you probably shouldn't be talking to me, but I can remain quiet even. I think Bitcoin has a strong case because Bitcoin, forget all the improves the grid crap. It's going to be hard to shut down Bitcoin and proof of work networks. It will be. But, you know, you got to think of you got to think of the governments as like a big brother and cracking the whip. And if the government say we're cracking down on proof of work networks, most people will close down their miners. Most people don't want to risk that sort of crap, especially the serious consequences. I think Bitcoin can survive so long as because obviously the mining operations now are pretty big, right? So long as they don't crack down on that and just destroy it like they did with China. Um, so yeah, I think uh, in terms of proof of work, be very careful because um, a small proof of work network, there's like little downside. Bitcoin, it's like, oh, this might destroy any economy that we've so far created. You know, smaller networks, it's like 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 Kadena, for example. If they close everything down, well, you know, no one's going to really cry home too much. It's a small project. I think Kadena is doing some pretty important things. I, I have my reservations with the project, but I feel like there could be a place with it because as it scales, uh, it doesn't use as much um, uh, uh, electricity. <clears throat> so look here. Bitcoin is also a smart contract platform. Yeah, I agree with um, you, TSTY5. I wish they made Bitcoin big block, man. I, I agree with you. I'm a, I'm a big blocker at heart. We can thank Kurt Workett Jr. for that. What a legend. <coughs> okay. I mean, guys, you're asking some questions in here. I'm, I'm, um, I'm just going to keep it to more directly at me. I don't know if you guys are communicating as much in the down there together. Would you say that HBAR has the issue that it can increase the supply at any moment and node slashing never happens? Yes, it has to go through the governing council. It has to be a unanimous decision, meaning they all have to agree on it. Not If one says no, it's no. Um, the company that created the HBAR, which the two founders originate uh, and still are, the founders and, and uh, CEOs, if you will, of Swirls. They always have a position on the board. Always. Perpetuity. Most other companies, I think, have a two-year lease or three-year lease. They have to cycle off. So, yeah, they can increase the supply. But that will, like, you imagine, okay, there's, like, how many people using the HBAR network and how many people in the future will use the HBAR network? Millions. Hopefully billions, right? Now, if they decided to increase the, if it wasn't a good decision to increase the um, total tokens, there will be severe backlash. That is a very serious thing to talk about. You know, it, it, definitely, they definitely won't make that decision half-heartedly. There'll be a very good reason for it. And lots of people don't really realize that inflation is good for a network. That's why inflation is good because you need inflation to supplement and, and, and to pay for the network and the resources and incentivization issues, right? So HBAR is a fixed supply, 50 billion tokens, okay? So there will come a time where there is so much demand, ideally, that's what we're all hoping for, that the 50 billion tokens aren't going to be enough. I don't care if it's 1,600 place the nominal, that people are just going to keep acquiring it. So 
there may come a time in not just HBAR, but I actually have this discussion today with someone else where there will be a point where they will have to make the decision to increase it. And remember, every project out there besides Bitcoin and a few select others plan to have like almost a master key where you can go in there and there can be improvements made to the network or governance proposals, governance, right? So Hedera's governance is just different. Rather than giving the keys to the project to the community that, let's face it, probably don't know as near enough about the project as what they'd like to. They think they do, they don't though. And it's given out based on who owns how much of the tokens. It's just given to people that are in business, very smart minds, best in the world at whatever they do, know the different markets. So I, I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. And we all know about it. It's completely transparent. Every single minutes, every single meeting's minutes is always published to Hedera. They're one of the most transparent networks I've so far come across, period. Near protocol or Solana? Near protocol. Easy, hands down. Don't even have to think about that one. What about Cadena? Yeah, Rich, I, I think I think Cadena has, um, I mean, I haven't reviewed it since my large review I did and I had some concerns on the project at that point. Whether those concerns still stand, I'm not too sure. They definitely have a long way to go in terms of building their ecosystem. I was uh, actually reached out by one of the major projects on uh, Cadena and they actually said they agreed with me. They said that they agreed, one of the most major projects on the network, so they agreed with my analysis on that project, on, on uh, Cadena. So I'm not not saying that to like boost my ego. I'm just saying like they were real issues, you know. No worries, one. Glad I could help, mate. What do you think about Moon River? Yeah, Moon River is a great project. Um, again, like it's just kind of like Moonbeam, but focus on a different market because Kusama is a different market altogether. Um, yeah, what is it? MVR, MNVR, MOVR. I, love, I just love it when I get the tickers right, you know? It just feels good. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I mean, look at the supply. I mean, yeah, of course, there's going to be inflation coming out, but come on, man. I don't care if there's a, if there's 100% inflation over the next 12 months. Because if, if that doubled, if the cycling supply went up to, what, 14 mil, I mean, that's, that's friggin' low, right? $6. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. $6. It's really this low? I think Moon River is going to, this project will 100x. Uh, I'm fairly confident. Not financial advice. <laughs> but if I'm a betting man, again, I told you guys I don't bet. If I was a betting man, I would p put probably $3,000. And, and I'm telling you, I, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in my bank account. I would put good size of my, um, good size of how much cash I'm holding right now to that 100x's. And don't get any ideas, guys. Don't go ahead and buy that because of what I'm just saying that. I mean, I haven't looked at the project. I mean, I'm just, it's the exact same as Moonbeam, right? It's just that different tokenomics, but it does depend on who's building on the network as well. That's a very important point. Ask about Katana. You did uh, the evaluation a year ago. That's right. Just updated the website and still developing your thoughts. That's actually a good question. You know, Katana was one of the ones I think I called out as being a potential 1,000x. Um, because look at the market cap, all right? Yeah, this is a, um, from remember, like a DEX, but like a, bringing like centralized exchange markets onto crypto. I oh, don't Trading terminal. Cool, yeah, cool. I mean, look, there's a need for it. If it does its job, if it actually performs as how it's planned, it'll do well. And this will probably a thousand X. You know, it's, it's, it's hindsight's killer, as I said to you earlier, you know. Like, we can look at this now and go, ah, 700k market cap. Nah, it's too risky. This is at least my thought, right? But then when 100x's or 1,000x's and it's like seven, 700 mil market cap, everyone's going to be like, oh, the, the signs were there, the signs were there. Why didn't I execute? Okay, so cool. You know, going back to the whole risk thing, if you have money to waste, well, I shouldn't say waste. No one has money to waste. If you have money to speculate, then this might be a good choice based on if it's a good project still, you know, or if it is at all.
Uh, PWKK, I guess it depends on your risk tolerance, however. Would you rather give up social media or eat the same dinner? I love these sort of things. Good question, man. Eat the same dinner for the rest of your life. Hmm. You know, one thing about me, guys, is I can eat the same meal over and over again. Um, I, 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 wor I was worked out. I was worked out. <laughs> you can tell I'm tired. I worked out for about nine years. I've stopped for the last eight or so months to pursue this um, full time. And um, don't get me wrong, my body's deteriorated. I had the same meal for majority of that time, breakfast and lunch, not dinner. Dinner was different. So I can do it. I can do it. I'm, I'm not quitting uh, social media. This is what I get up for every day. I live for this, man. If I didn't have this, I would be focused on... Well, I actually wanted to create my own uh, venture capital firm, so I'd probably be doing that. I love that question, by the way, how you like hyped it up like it was going to be a crypto question and done like the 180. I mean, that was cool. <laughs> Casper, Zinfin, XTC, Zora, K, Energy Web, any thoughts? K Crypto. Love Casper, love XDC, heard of Sora, haven't researched it, heard of Origin Trail, done a little bit of research on it, don't know too much about it. XX Network, uh, Rich, which is a good friend of mine, he's in the chat, and also another friend of mine have mentioned XX Network is a good project. I haven't done much research on that, but they're very trustworthy people, so I would probably put my faith in them. And Energy Web Token, love Energy Web, big green tick there. Robert, I think they do AI. Okay, that's asking an internal question. Use DYDX integrated. Okay. Stone Stone, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's it's weird. Like I had, so um, I have an investment property, right? And one of the guys that was moving in there was around my age, someone I know. And we were just getting chatting on the day he was moving in about you know, um, what I do and stuff like that. And I told him, he's like, my God, you're an influencer. I went, oh no, don't say that. I said, don't say that. Like, I appreciate you saying you're a big fan. To me, it's weird. You know what I mean? I'm just like a regular guy. just doing what he loves. It's like, but I appreciate that. You know, it's just kind of surreal to, to hear that. KM, thank you, my friend. Yeah, that's my thing. Like, I don't know, you know, this is the thing about most crypto YouTubers and I and I love to say it because it's so true. Let me just flip back onto the main screen here. Let me let me do some of this editing effects in the real time like a like a pro. <laughs> the the thing about um people in crypto is once you're in the game, right? Once you're doing YouTube, once you know enough about it to challenge what people say, it's actually crazy at how much you can just spot bullshit. And it's sad, you know, it really leaves a sour taste in my mouth. That's the reason I started my channel. My channel name has always been No BS Crypto because there's so much BS in the markets. I just had to be the voice of reason. Unfortunately, my full reviews didn't really get much uh, attention and they were pumping out once a week, twice, a, once a fortnight and once a week. So that doesn't pay the bills. I had to move into this. That's why I talk so fast and get to these videos as much as I can once a day now that I'm making them shorter and less breaking it down a very micro scale because I feel like you really need to know everything about these projects. You know, I'll be doing you an injustice otherwise. And I would want the same in return. I'd want the same in return. All right, guys. Um, how about VET? How about VET? Let's have a look. You know, again... Let's have a look at their um let's have a look at their their website. Let me just move my microphone back. Bolstering oh, I love that word, bolstering. Bolstering trust, collective action, redefined value and interconnected ecosystems, the V chain white paper. Oh, three point yeah, cool. Ugh, why? Like why have so much text? I mean look, okay, so like <laughs> don't get me wrong. I read this sort of stuff, right? But this is what they need to be thinking of when they're creating their copy when they're creating like why 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 would you have so much text on your landing page yeah it, because i'm I, my mindset is like i am someone who new to crypto or i'm someone who wants a quick diagnosis of the project 
I know. So V V Chain uh, aims to use distributed governance and Internet of Things technologies to create an ecosystem which solves major data hurdles for multiple global industries, from medical to energy, food, beverage, to sustainability and uh, SDG goals. Uh, I've never researched V Chain. You know, you know, I hear about it all the time. Um, where's their explorer? God, I hate networks that don't give you much data. God. Never mind. I was going to see how many nodes they had. How many holders they had. There might be multiple explorers, maybe. Here we go. This might look a bit better. You guys might be laughing at me right now because... Um, I don't know. Here we go. So, 101 nodes... Block producing nodes. X node tokens. Oh, these are special. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, IoT is definitely a big industry. Supply chain management's a big thing if they do that. I'm guessing they do if they do IoT. It's worth looking into. They have NFTs as well. Yeah, you know, the, here we go. Charts and stats. Thank you, Lord. This is what I live for. What a nerd. <laughs> transactions. Is this all time transaction? Must be. I'm guessing clauses are just like the type of transaction that they have. A one million a week, that's not too bad. I mean, it's, you know, you look at an age bar and they're pushing like, what, 40 mil a day. Here we go. This is what I love to see, right? How many, how many new addresses are there a day? Do we have that stat? Talks in weeks. Okay. Oh, so it's not that bad. I mean, it's definitely not going to, nothing to write home about. Total accounts. Two million. I mean, look, for a network that's been around this long, again, like, so all of this stuff is like face value crap. Like, you should never, like, look at, you should never do what I'm doing right here. Don't know much about a project and try to diagnose how good the project is based on stats because ultimately, there's so much that goes into that. Like, how new or old is the project? Like, is the project tailored towards people actually creating accounts? It might not be, right? A really important thing to look at is this, right? New contracts. So if they're in a, if there are a network looking at building applications, it really is important to look at how many smart contracts are being created. Now, I want to say, just because, let's just say one smart contract is created, it doesn't mean that there's one new application created. A lot of applications use multiple, multiple smart contracts in different ways to create an application. So this is, yeah, there's, it's, I mean, honestly, it's an okay amount. For where we are right now, it's an okay amount. Not a lot of holders, though. Again, I'm, it'd be disingenuous of me to kind of tell you what the, how good the project is based on based on that stats, but I don't know much about it. All right, I'm going to do a last round of answers, questions, question and answers, and then I'm going to go take some Panadol. <laughs> Chitlin, bro broccoli, and rice. The real question is, would you rather no thumbs or fingers? No. Who? How would that work? You'd have to like, you know, at least with fingers, you can like, yeah, pick up a pen. But, you know, imagine, right. Actually, that's kind of viable. I don't know. I'd probably say no thumbs. But then again, thumbs are like the most important part of your hand. Besides the hand. <laughs> Which of those projects do you still like? Covalent, Karura, um, AOS, Affinity, or Stratos? Covalent and Stratos, I'd say. Uh, pfft. I mean, I'd look, have to look into them again. If I was to pick one, I'd say Covalent, just from you know muscle memory. Be careful with anything BitBoy promotes. I speak from experience, 100% Mr. Panda. One of the channel OGs right here. Um, yeah, you know, I agree. Be careful with what BitBoy says. I don't want to say too much about that, dude. I don't want to get sued. Great stream. Thanks, Kyron. Going to join your Patreon to keep up the channel. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that, Tony. 
Yeah, right now I'm running from the little AdSense I'm getting and uh, I, I don't do sponsored. I haven't done anything sponsored just yet. Uh, I don't want to promote crap shit to you guys. Crap shit, there you go. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so the Patreon is what like kind of keeps me going. I appreciate that, Tony. Thanks so much, mate. Thanks so much, mate. I do two live streams a week. One live stream for my em uh, Obsidian tier. That's about $9 Australian dollars uh, a month. And for the premium tier, it's about 39 bucks a month. We do two live streams. And there's a whole bunch of information already on my Patreon that will help you vet projects and more to come. More to come. I just want to space it out more. I kind of went too heavy on the content too soon. BitBoy, just a shill. Yeah, I mean, you know. Check out FTM. Do you want me to get into it? Yeah, I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn, Con. Is it Con Chudo? Con Chudo 2010? Yeah, I would love to look into it, bro. Join the come join the next live stream next Monday, um, and I'll talk more about Phantom um, because I need to nullify this headache. Still a bit sick, guys. For those of you who are just joining now, I'm still a bit sick. Yeah, can Cardano hit seven dollars the next bull run? <coughs> I don't think so. Oh, oof. oh can Cardano hit seven dollars? Um. I think people have to remember that Cardano hit a market cap of like $90 billion the last bull run. And that's not to say projects always do better, but I think Cardano is more developed now. It has a crap over 2,000 projects built on it. Really, really great solution to um, their consensus. I love Charles. Charles is actually one of those people who I go ahead and watch his YouTube videos on his like 25 minute YouTube videos on some obscure topic. Just because he... He explains it very well. He doesn't move around much, but he's a very persuasive talker. So I think definitely $7 probably is quite reasonable for the next bull market, I think. We'll see how everything goes between now and then. Can they really bank the unbanked, you know? Here's the most private uh, coin uh, available to window. Uh, okay, sorry. I probably shouldn't do that. I probably should do that in my head, shouldn't I? When I'm just reading really fast. Quant percent to near percent, thanks. What do you mean, um, uh, Jimny? Quant percent to near percent? Um, my portfolio or like where I think it can uh, shoot up in price? Or I definitely think you'll find more returns with quant, in my opinion. Um, but near's got a long way to go. They've just sort of transitioned to their new USP. Love AXL, Axler, love uh, Axler. I don't know what the ticker for, uh, the name for the ticker XYO is. Uh, is it Louis? Uh, we're going to close up here in a second, so I'm not going to look into any more projects. Um, your views in Axler, yeah, yeah, Axler, um, great project. From memory, I got spooked with the tokenomics. Yeah, I was going to do a review on it, and then I was like, I remember looking into the tokenomics and went, no. And, but I, I can't remember exactly. This was like a couple weeks back. I just can't remember what it was exactly, but yeah, there was something there that spooked me regarding tokenomics. Give you a true gem to investigate. Dero is a DAG smart contract platform based private Ethereum. Now think about it. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll take some of these suggestions to go and have a look at guys. If you have any, let me know. I want to say thank you for being here, by the way. Right to the end of the stream too. All actual legends. You, you make this possible. You make this possible. Whiskey, mate, helps everything. <laughs> I'm not a drinker. I don't, I don't drink. Um, I'm kind of boring now. I just I just work all day, every day. Um, but I do have a three-quarter um, full Gentleman Jack at home. It's my favorite beverage. I probably should um, have some of that tonight. Hit the bed. Thoughts on XRP? Yeah, I kind of touched on that before. A sweaty goat. Um, touched on that before, bro. Um, it's not a project I'm very familiar with. I know a fair bit about... Um, Stellar, so they're very similar from what I've heard. I need to look more into XRP. I'm familiar with the basics, the basics, but again, I like to know a lot about it before I talk about it. You have to wonder why he would chill Ben when he knows people are waiting for him to F up. Yeah, shady stuff, man. Shady stuff to invest in. Dropped a cheeky $20 in Ben for now. Hey, you never know, man. You never know. XLR is interesting. Don't own any, by the way. Okay, okay. Quick swap 20 exchange. Well, I finally got to the bottom of the list. Guys and girls, thank you for being here today. Appreciate it so much. Drop a like if you haven't already. Um, support me out. That does actually do a lot for the algorithm. Um, it, it helps me keep doing what I'm doing. And 
Ultimately, um, if you guys have any suggestions or if you want to see me review any projects, again, I'm still, I mean, I'm still so new to live streams. I don't exactly know what I want to talk about. Let me know below. After the live stream is published, comment on this video and tell me exactly how you would want to see these live streams structured. I'm doing these live streams for your benefit. I've, I'm actually finding look, these are lots of fun, actually. I look forward to them, but um, I'm trying to provide you value. So if there's any way you want me to structure it, teach you something first, just look into projects on the cuff, maybe just go deeper into the projects rather than just at face value, then I'm keen to do that. Again, I'm here for you. Public servant number one. Thanks, guys. Again, legends, legends. All right. I'll see you in the next week, eh? Take care, everyone. Until then.